are we looking at a contender or a pretender, Bobby Chez? Well, you know what, Shannon Briggs has exactly all the tools. He has the height, the reach, the body, the speed, the power. The intangibles are the only things that are ever questioned. I think tonight we get to find out because both of them brings many of those intangibles to the table, and then we get to see. And you're talking, for the most part, about heart. Well, his heart and his chin, two things that are big in this business. If you don't have those at the top of the heavyweight division, you can forget about being a real contender. Both the contends that Briggs doesn't have heart. Well, we'll find out. Meanwhile, Briggs says Botha is too slow for him. And we'll find out that as well. Here is the White Buffalo, former IBF heavyweight champ. His marketability going up in defeat back in January, leading Mike Tyson on all three judges' cards before that perfect right hand sent him to the canvas in the fifth, ending the fight. He was clearly having his way with Tyson, even taunting him at times. He won the vacant title in 95 with a controversial decision over Axel Schultz in Germany, but was later stripped for steroid use. Then came the inspiring but losing effort to Michael Moore for the belt. Stopped in the 12th after that, a series of journeymen, and then Tyson. As he comes into view, let's see how the crowd reacts. Entering into enemy uh, territory, Shannon Briggs uh, from Brooklyn, New York. Fought a lot here in Atlantic City. The fans obviously more familiar with him. Bobby, at some point, a fighter needs to win for his stock to go up. Moral victories can only take you so far. You know what, I, Steve? I guarantee you that he needs a win for his stock to go up here. If he loses, his stock goes down. If he gets knocked out or a one-sided, lopsided decision, his stock will plummet. But the reason his stock went up after two losses, Moore beat Holyfield. He looked so good with Moore, and then coupled that with the fact that he was beating Tyson before he got knocked out, the people actually got the impression that he's better than he really is. That's not to say he's a bad fighter, but he isn't as great as they built him up. Well, maybe he knows something that nobody else knows because he looks very relaxed and confident, smiling to people along ringside. Let's see how they stack up on paper as we go to the tail of the tape. At 30, Botha is three years older than Briggs. The 6'4 Briggs, two inches taller than Botha. The weight almost even, but a big six-inch reach advantage for Briggs, an 80-inch reach for Shannon Briggs. And the key unified rules. For this heavyweight fight, there is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the fourth round, the fight is declared a technical draw. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at the Mark G. Edis Arena in Atlantic City, we're getting ready for the main event. Francois Botha versus Shannon Briggs. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and you to the magnificent Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for the featured bout of the evening, and it's all brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Dylan Productions, Showtime Event Television, Cedric Kushner Promotions, Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, and the undefeated, undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Larry Hazard, Sr. Chairman is Jerry Gormley, board members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Dominic Coletta, Dr. Jordan Garrison, Dr. Ken Remsen, and Dr. Howard Taylor. Timekeepers at the bell this evening, Lindsay Tucker and Roosevelt Gilbert. Introducing to you our judges scoring this main event from ringside from Plainfield, New Jersey, Henry Grant. From Atlantic City, Joe Pasquale. From Longside, New Jersey, John Stewart. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for our main event of the evening, a heavyweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, it's showtime. Introducing first our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Ed Cotton. 
Introducing to you, ladies and gentlemen, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, representing Mark Roberts Worldwide Entertainment and Sports, and hailing from Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at 230 pounds, with a record of 31 wins, two losses. He has 25 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the WBC number seven ranked heavyweight contender, introducing the hard-hitting Shannon Briggs. And his opponent across the ring on my right, ready to fight out of the red corner, wearing solid white trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at a ready 232 pounds. His fine record stands at 39 wins, two losses, one no contest with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former IBF heavyweight champion of the world, known as the White Buffalo, introducing Francois Botha. Once again, the referee in charge, Ed Cotton, now to give instructions, 10 rounds of main event boxing schedule. Boxers, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Once again, let me remind you, there's no stand and eight count, there's no three knockdown rule. If a fighter gets knocked down, go to the furthest neutral corner. Wait till I tell you to come out. Protect yourself at all times. Let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Francois Botha, methodical, lulling style, allows himself to be hit, but does have a very good chin. He can be deceptive and heavy-handed. Shannon Briggs, whose average length of fights is just over three rounds, he told us not only does he have to win, but he has to look good. Says he's faster, stronger, he can box or slow. He's flashy and flashier dressed. Indeed. He's a, he's a vision. Oh, look at that right hand to start. Shannon right Briggs hand. with a big overhand right. That, that is right his hand. bread and butter. Oh, yeah, over to jab, too. Look up both. He keeps that lazy left hand down. He is so much slow with it. That right hand is going to be one of the keys. He almost knocked Lennox Lewis down. That was with a short left hook in the first round. Well, they define who's going to be the offensive uh, fighter and who's going to be a defensive one right off the bat. I mean, it's Shannon coming after it, coming to get it. And if Shannon Briggs wants to get by both and then fight Mike Tyson, he's going to have to fight a fight where he comes straight in and punches because that's the kind of fight that Mike Tyson likes. And both of them certainly stands there, waits for you to come in. He, there's no fancy footwork, no movement. He's going to stand there. If you come in, you can pop him. But you might get hit in exchange. Both of us very candid about the fact that he's got to work, wait the first three or four rounds and weather the storm. He knows Briggs is going to come out banging. Yeah, he says, to win, i got to control the pace. I can't yeah, just apply yeah. pressure. I need a jab, even while backing up. He said, both of tries to be cute, and he showboats. i got to stay right on top of him, see how smart a fighter he is. But both have said he's not going to showboat or be cute anymore. He was too careless against Mike Tyson. Both it does not have the range or the speed to win this fight going backwards. If he stays going backwards this whole fight, he can't win it. He's got those little short arms. He's got to come forward. He's got to come forward. He's got to get under the jab. He's got to get to the body. And he has to wear Briggs down with body shots. He has to attack the body, not the head, like others do against Briggs. Can't look for the knockout, otherwise you're vulnerable. The words of both of them. Briggs is much faster, and he should be flashing those hands in there right now. If he wants to take this, if he wants to show he's 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 the kind of guy that fights for the title, and he's got to come in with speed. He's got to come in with force. Bit of a chess match here in the opening round under a minute remaining. Round one scheduled for ten. Both is working in behind a nice double jab and overhand right. Fairly effective. Not a Except for that combination, the jab and then the overhand right by Briggs. Briggs showing that's the kind of charge we need. You need to charge the light brigade here. We need two 